Welcome back. This time it's going to be exciting. <laughs> it's about rocket physics. We are going to take a look at the basic principles of how a rocket basically moves and then we're going to analyze the forces in this system here and um, at the end of the video we will have calculated the velocity of a rocket after a particular period of time. Okay, this is a nice drawing. Okay, um, I'm not sure about that, but uh, however, we have a rocket here and we have um, some fuel that is inside of this rocket in its uh, gas tank or fuel tank and um, the fuel is going to come out in the negative in the negative y direction and the rocket is going to fly um, to take off in the positive y direction. Okay, um, but after having familiarized us with this uh, drawing here, with this simple system, we also need to um, analyze some other things like the mass of this whole system. So the mass is obviously going to depend on time because the fuel gets less and less as the rocket, you know, as the rocket takes off, um, the mass of the fuel is being lost and um, so the overall net, so the overall yeah, mass of this whole system is going to be less and less. So um, we have a mass that is dependent on time and this mass is just going to be m of t. And this is going to equal the initial mass of this whole system, so that's um, the fuel, the mass of the fuel that we have filled in at the beginning, plus the uh, mass that the rocket just naturally has. And then um, we subtract from that something called r times t, but r, let, let me explain that what r actually is. R is dm over dt, so it's going to be a change in mass over time. That's just just like um, dx over dt. If you if you uh, remember this um, s equals v times t equation. This um, after a particular um, period of time, and you were traveling at a particular speed, you are you have covered a certain distance, and that's exactly like it. Um, like that, but this time it's for masses, you know. V is actually um, dx over dt, and we are going to multiply that by t, and this time it's just dm over dt, and we are going to multiply that by t. So it's just the mass that uh, the system has lost um, after a particular period of time, and we subtract that from the mass that it initially had, and that's the mass at a particular time. Okay, so um, let's uh, take a look at the forces in this system. We will have obviously a force upwards on the rocket. So um, this is going to be a force upwards on the rocket, right? Because you know the rocket is accelerating, there has to be a force. And uh, what is also accelerating, what could be the, as Newton said, equal but opposite force. Well, that's just going to be the force of the bit of fuel that is coming out. So for each bit of fuel there is a force in this direction, negative direction, and uh, this is going to cause a force in the positive direction, or actually these forces just coincide. Um, <laughs> the, first, uh, the first force is not the cause of the other force for the other force, they just coincide. Okay, um, there is a bit of fuel that's coming out of the rocket and uh, this corresponds to this force here and therefore there will also be an upward force acting upon the rocket. And now I will explain to you how these forces actually, um, ex uh, how these forces are being created somehow in this uh, fuel chamber. Basically, so we have a fuel chamber here, and that is another very nice drawing. I know that, and um, it's actually a very poor design. So if you're planning to become a NASA engineer, don't follow uh, the design principles of somebody on YouTube or on somebody <laughs> of somebody who's 
which just explain the basics to you. Um, because I actually don't know how this works and NASA has probably optimized it. So this is the uh, burning chamber of the rocket and this is just some uh, some pipe that is that is uh, supplying um, this chamber with fuel and the fuel comes out of this pipe basically or uh, whatever it is there and uh, then there is some kind of a lighter or so and this ignites the fuel the fuel um, the fuel is being ignited and then begins to burn and since it's being since it's, it's burning there is a lot of heat that's being generated and we all know uh, if some if something is heated up it's going to expand so um, this fuel is going to expand the volume is getting bigger and bigger and therefore there will be a pressure okay it, this will generate a pressure and the pressure is, uh, is uh, applied to the back chamber here of the rocket and this is the component of the force that pushes the rocket upwards um, but the uh, this pressure is also going to be applied to the to the sides of the rocket which uh, doesn't really interest us but this is you know you don't get the uh, you don't get the optimal solution for that there's always some some uh, energy lost here um, but that won't uh, that won't bother us now we will just um, consider the upward force and the downward force so there's an upward force created by this pressure on the rocket and the downward force um, created by this pressure on the particles and th those particles are being pushed out of the rocket okay so now you know how th this uh, how these forces actually are being created okay um since we have equal and opposite forces let's just say that f on the rocket f on rocket equals f on fuel right on a tiny bit of fuel okay but um, since it's opposite forces we have to put a minus sign in front of here okay so um, I hope you all agree with this the uh, Newton said that um, there are two equal and opposite forces and we have you know analyzed the situation here found our two forces and now we set them equal and uh, we might get something from that so the force on the rocket is just the mass on the rocket right so this is going to be m and m is going to be m of t but I'm not always going to write of t and um, if this is tiny uh, if this is little m then uh, it's al just always going to be this m of t here so m times dv over dt right because the force is m times a and a is just dv over dt change in velocity over time and um, this is going to be the v the velocity of the rocket and we are going to integrate that over that later okay then we have um, well, what is minus the force on the fuel? Well, uh, the force is m times a, and we don't actually know the uh, acceleration of the fuel, so we just remember the definition of the force, which is the change of momentum over time, dp over dt. Okay, and we put this minus sign in front of it, because we also have a minus sign here and um, well dp over dt this is just going to be the, cha the change of uh, the momentum of this little bit of fuel that is going to be minus dm over dt okay dm over dt oh and times v times v relative to be sh uh, to be exact v relative is um, the relative velocity of this fuel so if you're uh, if you're sitting in the rocket um, the fuel is coming out um, from your perspective at a constant velocity and this is going to be v relative and dm over dt um, times v relative is is the uh, momentum so it's basically dp over dt here because the the thing that is changing is the mass 
and the velocity is constant so we just write write dm instead of uh, dv or something we write dm over dt and um, if you look closely uh, or if we remember how this r how we define this r or did we actually no i don't think that we have defined it so let's define it now so this is the rate at which the uh, the rocket is uh, losing mass, this is dm over dt. And this is actually going to be constant. Constant. Since we have a, a constant burning ratio, then um, the, ra the rate um, the, the rate at which the rocket is losing mass is also be, uh, going to be constant. And um, since this is constant, we just can just call it r and well if it wasn't constant we, it wasn't constant we also could call it r but however we just write minus r times v relative and v relative is constant minus r is also constant and now this is our famous uh, rocket equation basically yeah that is the rocket equation okay um doesn't really have a much deeper meaning um so let's just continue and uh, what we're going to do is well we want to integrate over uh, velocity right over dv right so we need this dv to be alone on one side so let's just divide by m and multiply by t dt so this is going to be dv equals minus r times v relative um, times dt times 1 over m and 1 over m is also going to is also dependent on t and uh, if we integrate over this if we say um, integral over dv from v0 to v or v final we actually we ac let's actually call this thing v and then we just say v prime here and uh, let's call this dt prime and we integrate from 0 to t we can just rename those uh, those um, this was actually dt but we just renamed it so uh, this t is uh, has another name than this t, and it's just mathematically more uh, more correct. Okay, now um, let's just write what that is equal to. This is r times v rel relative um, times. Hmm, okay, this is one over m zero minus r times t, and. Uh, now, what's the integral of that? And this is just the logarithm, right, of m0 minus r times t from 0, or t prime, <laughs> from 0 to t. And uh, what is that equal to? Minus r times v relative times well um, this is ln of m0 minus r t prime minus ln of m0 and if we just multiply that uh, if you just take this minus 1 and multiply it um, within these brackets here then we get this is equal to r times v relative times um, if we switch those two uh, expressions here then we've got ln of m0 minus ln of m0 minus rt prime and this is um, going to be logarithm of uh, m0 right over m0 minus rt or 
this is not T prime, this is this is T, sorry. Okay, um, M0 over M0 minus RT. And this is going to be our um, velocity. Okay, we have integrated over uh, over the tiny changes in velocity here. And then we get our velocity minus velocity at the beginning. And um, our final equation will be the velocity after some time equals the initial velocity plus the rate at which the um, spaceship is losing mass times the relative velocity of the mass um, uh, of the of the fuel that's coming out of the rocket as uh, from an, from an observer's perspective that is uh, sitting inside of the rocket um, times the ln of m0 over m. Okay, that's it. Um, I hope you understood that. Um, I hope I didn't make any mistakes. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and we will see you in the next video.